Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Excited to have everyone join us today. Um, excited that you're participating. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes. If you've got questions or anything, don't hesitate to use the chat function, ask, or ask a question. Um, we're pretty informal here, so um, love to hear from you and love to um, help in any way we can in terms of asking questions. So this week, uh, we are pleased to have our chief data scientist, uh, Natalia or Zeno uh, Gonzalez here with us today. Um, we're going to be exploring how to leverage patient access data to improve revenue cycle results. Um, so to kick us off, uh, Natalia, how does data play a role in patient access? Yeah, so Kate, thanks for inviting me to, to join this chat. Um, data insights are key to patient access. Maybe I'm a bit biased, I'm a data scientist, but really insurance information, benefits, procedures, diagnoses, these all exist in coded forms. And these are key data elements for patient access. So information on the patient, the provider, the facility, these may also influence decisions in patient access and are also considered data. So Many of the decisions and outcomes from the patient access side are determined algorithmically by the payers. And they, de they depend on the specific data for that situation. So for example, does the procedure require prior authorization? Uh, what is the patient pay estimate? Uh, was the information submitted to the payer complete and accurate? Now, clinical documentation data is also key to prior authorization and medical necessity, but it does require a more complex process to interpret it algorithmically. So we've kind of covered a lot of different aspects of data and patient access. Uh, in addition to the data provided in the forums and entered in the EHR or the practice management system, the patient access outcomes are also extremely valuable data. And some examples of these are, did a procedure require prior authorization? Uh, were supporting clinical documents provided to the payer? Was the prior authorization request denied? And if so, why? Or how long did it take to obtain an authorization? Now, all of these events and outcomes continually add to the plethora of data and patient access. And machine learning can be used to predict many of these outcomes. Now for machine learning models, as more outcomes are recorded, the models can also be updated and improved via feedback learning. And furthermore, high confidence machine learning predictions and inferences can be used to automate parts of patient access as well in machine learning enabled automation. So just overall in patient access, the, the data can really be used to identify the, some problem areas, uh, also improving efficiency and increasing revenue. So basically data is very important. Thank you. Um, what are some ways or, or how are healthcare organizations um, missing out by not looking at data? Yeah, so data can help uh, the organizations understand their patient populations. Uh, they can also provide insight into revenue cycle health or identify problem areas in pretty complex and detailed ways. So the human mind can only remember so much anecdotally form certain types of connections, but data will quantify issues. So the business can go beyond these anecdotal reports and choosing what issues to prioritize. The data can also be used to objectively measure improvement after some changes have been made in a practice. And of course, machine learning can help with learning these opportunities at scale. So based on the organizational interests and goals, the data can also be parsed in different ways for humans to digest it and to make certain inferences from the data. So beyond like aggregations and splitting the data 
uh, in different ways. The data itself is essential for developing and implementing the machine learning models. And these can provide like more detailed in insights as well. So for example, uh, we can predict what is the likelihood of getting a denial, or we can predict how long will a payer take to authorize a prior auth request, or even how much will be recovered for a given claim. So machine learning models can be employed to, to make these predictions and also to surface some sort of obscure patterns in the data. So patterns that are perhaps so detailed or compose such a small or such a detailed combination of fields, a, a very specific subpopulation uh, that it would be difficult for just a person to identify. And so these machine learning models can surface these patterns and identify problem areas when you can't perform an exhaustive search of all combinations. Because often this is just computationally prohibitive. If you're working in Excel, you don't have enough rows in your data sheets to, to look at everything as well. So by not looking at the data, the healthcare organizations are missing out on learning more about themselves, identifying their, their problem areas, and also missing out on opportunities for improving efficiency as well as recovery. Okay, great. So while well, gathering all this data sounds, sounds great, um, but also sounds like a lot of work. So how can technology help with this? Yeah. <laughs> It is great and it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, so the good thing is that healthcare data is largely in electronic form nowadays or not no longer dealing with like huge stacks of paper that would need to be entered into some system. Um, so the data collected via the EHRs, the practice management systems is often what we call structured data. So this is a data that can be placed in a tabular form or where you have sort of like key value pairs. So you know what the ICD is, that's the, your key, you know what the, the value is based on the, the patient. Um, so patient demographics, insurance information, facility, provider details, procedure codes, diagnosis codes, these are all structured data. Uh, this is the data that you would be able to do some aggregations on and place in a pivot table or, or analyzed that way. Now, unstructured data would be free text and images. Now it's still helpful to have these in the EHR. So by having providers and practices fill out data electronically, uh, we, some of the data can also become more structured. So if we have this like open-ended fields where it's like free text, just enter the insurance uh, information, then that becomes a bit more complex to analyze later on than actually selecting from a predefined set of, or a predefined list of options. Uh, so these are some of the changes where technology can help. It's kind of like making data more structured. And the clinical notes and other free texts that are entered in an EHR, it's easier to analyze than those that are maybe written by hand or typed and then scanned and uploaded to the EHR. So all of this still provides a very rich source of data. So clinical notes are essential when we're talking about medical necessity. And even though this would be much harder to enter into a pivot table, we can use tools such as uh, natural language processing techniques to be able to extract concepts or features from the data. And then the, these concepts and features can be used in the in structured form and they can also be used for machine learning models. So as the data is uh, entered electronically at the practice, uh, also if you have integration with products such as our products that can provide analytics and insights, then you have a seamless data flow and, and you also have that additional data storage so that you can use the data and leverage it in a variety of use cases. Let's talk about how groups can take the data and utilize that to improve revenue cycle results. So data can help identify different areas of uh, revenue leakage or lost revenue at, that can be proactively avoided. 
missing data, incomplete data, incorrect data uh, is a big component of that. And so if you have a way of identifying that you're missing uh, some key field for submitting a prior auth request, then you're likely going to get a denial or have to like just kind of put a pause, gather, hear back from the payer, gather the necessary data and come back. And so that delays the whole process. So definitely like knowing that you have a complete data and correct data for that patient so you can avoid certain kinds of denials uh, is key. And also frequent types of uh, denials can be identified by performing some of these analytics. So if you find that you're getting a, a certain type of denial, then you can try to identify what subset of the population is that denial common for. So depending on what data you have available, the subset of the population may be a series of procedures or payers or geography, maybe certain physicians um, are kind of related to having higher denial rate. Uh, certain elements in the clinical notes could be related to de higher denials or missing elements. Um, so the, so the patient population affected by the denial can be pretty broad or specific. Now, if you're able to identify the patterns, then you can try to be proactive to avoid them in the future. So if you find that, for example, clinical necessity requirements were not met, then you can identify, okay, well, it happens for this population who have these elements in common. Let's try to make sure that we're providing this set of information. If you're getting a higher rate than expected of eligibility denials, then perhaps some front office procedures can be modified to ensure that you do have the most recent insurance for a patient, or you can work with a third party to identify the correct insurance or perhaps to discover insurance if no insurance was provided. Uh, and then if you're getting an increased rate of denials from a specific payer, then that could be a hint that the payer requirements or the payer's best practices have changed and then can adapt accordingly. But also beyond denials, the data can help at the point of scheduling. So if you understand that a procedure requires a prior authorization, and you understand how long it would take to obtain that prior authorization, then you can act on it. You can schedule a patient uh, considering the time it would take to obtain that authorization. And in the case of, uh, if you understand that the procedure does not require prior authorization, then you know that you can schedule immediately and not have the patient wait. So in a sense, you can improve the patient satisfaction and also avoid lost revenue because you're reducing the number of times maybe a procedure needs to be rescheduled due to a missing authorization. And you can also provide that immediate scheduling when you're very confident that no authorization, uh, no prior authorization will be required. So you can use the data to not just like identify problem areas, but also increase efficiency in the practice as well. Thanks. I think you mentioned something that was really important. Um, a lot of times we see practices when they're evaluating denials, they're looking at very surface level data, right? And so they're mm -hmm. not digging into the data to really get to the heart of why claims are being denied and what the trends are. They may just be looking at, these are our top five denial reasons, and they could be as broad as eligibility, prior off, um, without digging into payer trends and um, more specifics like you discussed. Good. I think um, going back to that machine learning point, uh, that's really important. It, it can be very overwhelming if you're starting to look at analyzing data out of Excel, which is how a lot of yes. folks are doing it. Um, and also by the time you get that data exported and analyzed, it's old, right? I mean, mm -hmm. payers are changing things constantly. So to keep up with that, having a technology solution um, that's using machine learning is really important to have in place if you really want to get serious about analyzing the data. Definitely. Great. So that 
those are all the questions I have for you. Um, I want to open it up now and see if anybody's got any questions that they would like to ask Natalia. Question is, in regards to automation, does Infinix offer automation for systems that it cannot integrate with? Can you give me a specific system? Centricity, we do integrate with Centricity. Um, we integrate with pretty much any EHR or PM. That answers your question. Also happy to send over um, after this call. I can send you over um, more information on what that integration looks like. We have an integration map that shows how that works. So happy to send that over to you. Okay, great. We'll give everybody a few minutes back on their schedules um, and look forward to seeing everyone here next week. Have a great evening, a great rest of your week, and hope to see you all soon. Bye now. Thanks, Natalia. Thank you. Thank you.